Bro, I legit recorded gameplay for Mario Land 2 and then realized I had to do an interlude episode. <laughs> In that Game & Watch Mario games video, I did two months ago, holy shit. And I mentioned that I wanted to do a review on Donkey Kong but quit because it's too hard. I still want to review the game though and that's what this video is for. This video will be a review of the Donkey Kong arcade game, as well as the other two in the trilogy. I decided to do this because if I just reviewed the first game it'd be like a five minute video or some shit and also uh, I was bored. First we got Donkey Kong and this game sucks fucking cock. Arcade games obviously have limitations when it comes to the gameplay. You'll rarely find a full on adventure just sitting there in the arcades. But even with those limitations, I still have arcade games I enjoy, like Bonanza Bros, Outrun, Mario Bros, etc. And this is not one of them. I really, really tried to enjoy this one. It looked pretty fun to me seeing gameplay, but holy fuck is this game hard. This game, ge genuinely, and I mean this, might be the hardest game I've ever played. It's that bad. First off, the presentation is a mixed bag. While I do like the art style and it's pretty colorful, the music is basically non-existent. It's like a five note loop, dude. Granted, it's not the worst example of it. I think that honor has to go to Hong Kong 97. But I still wish it had, you know, music. But the first level is complete fucking booty cheeks, dude, despite being iconic. It's basically a straight shot to the top of the screen. And while that doesn't sound that bad, Donkey Kong throws barrels at a fucking supersonic pace. Which is already bad, but dude, the barrels themselves make this game um bearable. They can go down ladders occasionally, which would be fine, but there's little, not even little conveyance, no conveyance as to if they will go down ladders. It could have been so easy to just make a separate type of barrels that are green or orange or whatever, and those are the type of barrels that can move down ladders. Also, often you'll be just chilling at the second highest floor, waiting for an opportunity to proceed because of the frequency of the barrels. Shit like this makes the game difficulty super arbitrary, but it obviously isn't done because they were too lazy. It's pretty clear that stuff like this, not even exclusive to Donkey Kong, was done because it's set in an arcade and needs to make as much money as possible. Decisions like that were genius back then, but the game has aged very poorly because of this. The hammer is meant to be a tool to help with this, and while it's very useful in the second stage, it merely exists as a way to rack up points in a safe way, because barrels will continuously spawn. It's not like getting rid of any is going to do anything. Even on the second stage though, I have one very big issue that just infuriates me dude. When using the hammer, you are completely prevented from climbing ladders, and I shouldn't have to explain why this makes the game less fun. Because it doesn't make the game harder. I mean, after all, you're invincible during the time you have it. It just exists as a minor annoyance more than anything, and it's not done for any reason at all. Another arbitrary annoyance is what I call level cycles. Most players will never even find that there's more than two levels because of this. So what is it? I'll run down the typical playthrough of Donkey Kong. Play at level 1, beat it, level 2, beat that level, and now you're back at level 1. There's a simple explanation for this. Basically, the first time you beat the first two levels, that's cycle 1. After cycle 1, you enter cycle 2, which is level 1, 2, and 3, and cycle 3 plus has all the levels. It's pointless, but also genius. It sucks for gameplay, but for the whole arcade industry, it's great. Some players will be able to reach level 3, and other people who are watching or just happen to hear about it will be driven more to reach that level. It's super smart for profit, but once it Again, the game has aged poorly because of that. And those people who never made it to level 3? I'm with those people. Again, this is the hardest game I've ever played. And I've played Cuphead, Donkey Kong Country, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, fucking Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. And somehow this game that's not fucking Nintendo as a company today, this is the hardest. It's super hard to describe just how hard this game is, but what I believe to be the biggest causation of all this? It's not the barrels, the first stage, the hammers, the levels, the level cycling, of all things, it's the controls. The grind movement is perfect for this game. Not too fast, not too slow, but much like Mario Bros, you cannot control your jump direction at all. This makes some situations nearly impossible, and in some cases, completely impossible. Take the first stage for example. It's already hard enough with the shitty barrel mechanics, but the controls make the barrels even more of a nuisance. Often there will be two barrels coming at you with a tiny gap in between. You'll just jump over and get hit by the second barrel. With more refined controls, you could jump over the barrel and mid-air turn around to keep distance from the barrel to be able to feasibly jump over. But that's not what happens and it makes this game so irritating. Or at least more irritating than it already was. Slight spoilers for the final ranking of the retrospective here, but this one landed extremely low down at 23. I'm not sure many of you care to know that anyway, but it's a testament to how un 
unbearable this game is to play. And I didn't even make it to level 3. Donkey Kong Jr., at least for me, seems to be the black sheep of the original arcade run for Donkey Kong. Sure, people don't seem to bring up Donkey Kong 3 very often, but when they do, it gets pretty high praise, while Donkey Kong Jr. just gets called worse than Donkey Kong. But I'm here to stand up for this game. Why? Because it's good? No, it's not. But it deserves more, honestly. I'm not much of a fan of DK Jr.'s design, and I'm not like some people who pray to Nintendo every day to bring him back even though he's appeared in like 6 games. But I'm here to say that this game is indeed better than Donkey Kong, at least in my eyes. First off, I'm gonna mention that sadly this game's only claim to fame besides being one of DK Jr.'s 3 starring roles is that it's the only game where Mario is the main villain, at least to my knowledge. It's pretty cool that Mario is the villain and it is the most memorable part of the game, but I'm quite sad to say that Mario obviously doesn't have any compelling boss battles or whatever for this old arcade game. Donkey Kong Jr. is still a very difficult game, but it's much less for arbitrary reasons this time. There's almost no area is where more conveyance is needed, and it's better off for it. However, the difficulty isn't perfect. The first level is more of an average difficulty with not too much stopping you from getting to the end. However, the second level is complete fucking bullshit, and much like the original arcade game, it stopped me from progressing. But I'm also not entirely saying that's a bad thing, because honestly, it's a really cool challenge and this is genuinely really fun. It's super engaging to dodge like the 50 quadrillion things flying at you at once. But my main issue with it is that it's a huge fucking difficulty spike. We're going from like a 4 out of 10 on the difficulty scale to a straight up like 9.5 out of fucking 10. It's so weird. It would have been completely fine if they did a normal system instead of the cycle bullshit. Just make the players do levels 1 to 3 and then 4 instead of 1 and then 4. It's annoying as shit because yeah, the cycle system is good for arcade revenue and stuff, but it ages the game like complete fucking shit. The one reason I consider this game to be better is the speed dynamic. Your main form of vertical traversal is these vines. And while holding up normally makes you go up slowly, grabbing onto two vines at once and holding up makes it go way faster. It sounds pointless to hold onto only one, but the dynamic comes into play with the enemies. Because if an enemy is going down or up a vine you're holding onto, they'll bite your hand and you're fucking dead. So holding onto one vine is much safer but also much slower. It's a great dynamic and comes into play in that second level, but I can't experience much of it because I can't get past the second stage. While it is an improvement over Donkey Kong, the difficulty spike and lack of memorability brings it down to like a 4 out of 10. Lastly, I can't just talk about those two without mentioning Donkey Kong 3. When it comes to underrated arcade titles, there's perhaps no other example more popular than Donkey Kong 3, and I can see why. Hell, before even playing any of these, I thought this would be the best. And guess what? I was right. I'm not going to lie to you guys and say this is an amazing arcade game or anything, probably like a 6 out of 10, but I definitely think it's the best Mario arcade game. I don't know though, maybe I should make a video on all the Mario arcade games in the future. Firstly, I should say before talking about this that you shouldn't let the name fool you. This is not at all like Donkey Kong or Jr. This isn't even a platformer really, but honestly I like it for that. The gameplay loop of this game is honestly very well executed. Basically, Donkey Kong is at the top and as this random ass guy that is not Mario Mario named Stanley, you gotta spray him to the top of the screen. Simple enough, but the plants at the bottom make it a whole lot more engaging. Basically, a ton of enemies attack, and of those, these flies are the most common and the most important. They won't try to attack or get in the way of you, rather they will just try and take your plants away. You don't die if you lose them all, but bonus points are rewarded for each plant that's still intact after beating the level. You can kill the flies by spraying them, but if doing that, more time is given to Donkey Kong to spawn more enemies, and that's the basic gameplay loop. There's also a power-up, the super sprayer. If you get Donkey Kong high enough on the screen, it'll be knocked down and made available to grab. It lasts a temporary amount of time, but it's super satisfying to use it to spray Donkey Kong to the top in 2 seconds. This game is significantly easier than the first two, but it's much better off for it considering you can actually get to other stages. If I have to say one complaint I have, it's gotta be this little worm guys. They can only be cool with the super spread, and while that's not a bad thing on its own, they have a really annoying quirk that makes the game take longer. When you spray them, they won't get hurt, but they will stay in place for like 3 seconds, which just makes them act like a really annoying shield for Donkey Kong that didn't need to be there, and it ends up making me impatient. Still though, this is a pretty fun time, and out of all the Donkey Kong games, while I wouldn't recommend playing it over the original Donkey Kong, it's still the best one, and its biggest flaw is the lack of memorability. It's not the game's fault. It didn't make much of an impact, and its only new character, Stanley, never appeared in another game other than its PC port. Donkey Kong Jr., despite being a very small part of the series, still appeared in 10 or so games, even appearing as a playable character. 
bag during the original Mario Kart and the first two Mario Tennis games. Stanley, however, only appeared in a major role in two games, Greenhouse, the Game & Watch game that was his debut, and of course Donkey Kong 3. It's a shame too because I like his design, but yeah, it's just really forgettable, not only because it's lack of impact, but also because it deviates from the first two games in a way that at least I think is cool. But it isn't weird enough to be as memorable as other standout deviations like Shadow the Hedgehog or Bomberman Grand Zero, or even something less notable like Doom 3. But still, it's a very nice way to cap off the series that's really only notable for its impact. I'm not including the country games when I say that because obviously those games are great, but I really don't like these too much. Donkey Kong 3 is overlooked, sure, but for a very valid reason. It's like a 6 out of 10. And the other two, despite being more successful, were a whole lot worse in my eyes due to their priorities of making money. A commenter, and I'm sure a lot of other people were or are wondering if I am going to cover the Donkey Kong Game Boy game, and trust me, I am. I am honestly looking forward to it, but obviously with caution. I've been this led by the general consensus of things far too often. Holy fuck are we getting to that soon. But as for now, I actually have no clue how to end this. Look, the Mario Land 2 video is coming soon. That's kind of a given, but who cares? Shut up.